Now more examples on the resolution of a force into two components. Example, two forces act at a point. Alpha is the angle between them. So we have two forces, F1 and F2. The angle between the two forces is alpha, where tan alpha is negative 1 over square root 3. If the resultant is perpendicular to the smaller force and the greater force is 30 newtons, find the magnitude of the other force in the resultant. So we have two forces. The angle between the two forces is alpha, where tan alpha is negative 1 over square root 3. If tan alpha is negative 1 over square root 3, so alpha is, use the calculator, alpha is 150 degree. So the angle between the two forces is 150 degree. One of the two forces, F1, is unknown. The other force is 30 newton, and the 30 newton is the greater force. Find the magnitude of the other of F1. We want to find F1 in the resultant, where the resultant is perpendicular to the smaller force F1. Draw a perpendicular to F1 that represents the resultant. This is a right angle. And the angle alpha between the two forces, this is alpha. This is the angle alpha between the two forces. It's 150 degree. This is F2. F2 is 30 Newton. This is a greater force. Now the angle between F2 and R is 150 minus 90 to be 60 degree. Remember the rule. We have the greater force F2. We have the angle of inclination between F1 and R. Remember the rule, F1 equals R times sine theta 2. If it's F1, take the other angle over sine of the sum of the two angles, theta 1 plus theta 2. So F2, or the 30 newtons, equals the resultant R, which is unknown, times sine of the other angle, which is right, which is 90 degree, so sine 90 over sine of the sum of the two angles, which is alpha or 150 degree, so over sine 150 degree. To find R cross product, move the sine 150 up, move the sine 150 up and move the sine 90 down. So R is 30 sine 150 and over sine 90, then R is 15 newtons. Now to find F1, similarly, F1 equals R sine the other angle 60 over sine of the sum of the two angles 150, so over sine 150, so 15 times sine 60 over sine 150 to be 15 square root 3 newtons. F1 is 15 square root 3 newtons and R is 15 newtons. If I and J are two perpendicular unit vectors in the directions of the x-axis and the y-axis, to resolve a force R in the direction of the I and the J, assuming the force F1 is adjacent to the angle theta, then F1 will take the cosine, so F1 equals R cosine theta in the direction of I. The other component of the force will take the sine of theta, so F2 equals R sine theta, times in the direction of J. So R, the resultant R equals F1 plus F2. And finally, R equals R cosine theta in the direction of I plus R sine theta in the direction of J. Another way to express a force is to give the magnitude of the force in the, in the angle formed with the positive direction of the x-axis. So F equals F and theta means an angle F with inclination theta degree with the horizontal. In this case, the two components of the force will be the first component of the force adjacent to the angle theta will take, of course, the cosine of theta. So this equals F cosine theta in the direction of I. And the other component will take the sines. So F2 equals F sine theta in the direction of J. F equals F cosine theta in the direction of I plus F sine theta in the direction of J. Example, if O is the origin point of a system of perpendicular Cartesian coordinates in the plane, F acts at O 
and i and j are two per are two fundamental unit vec unit vectors in the direction of o x and o y. Find the two components of f in the direction of the two axes f. If f equals negative two and negative five. Number one, if f equals negative two and negative five, this means the first coordinate means the direction of i, and the second coordinate means the direction of j. So f equals negative two i minus five j. So the two components of the force are negative two i and negative five j. So we have we want to find the two components of the force. So the two components of the force are negative two units in the direction of OX and negative five units in the direction of OY. Number two, we want to find the component of F if F equals 12 and 210. 12 is the magnitude of the given force and 210 is the angle formed by the force with the horizontal axis. The force has two components. The horizontal component of the force is the adjacent to the given angle, so it will take the cosine. The other component will take the sine, so the resultant equals r cosine theta in the direction of i and r sine theta in the direction of j. So f equals the magnitude 12 times cosine 210 in the direction 210 in the direction of i then the two components of the force are 12 cosine 210 this is the horizontal component and 12 sine 210 and this is the vertical component so this is equal to negative 6 square root 3 this represents the direction of i and negative 6 and this represents the direction of g so the two components are negative 6 square root 3 in the direction of i and negative 6 in the direction of j. The two components are negative 6 square root 3 units in the direction of ox and negative 6 and negative 6 units in the direction of oy. Finally, if f equals 6i and j, want to find the two components of f. If f equals 6i minus j, the two components of the force are 6i and negative j the two components of the force are six units in the direction of ox and negative one unit in the direction of oy